This patient is a 78-year-old woman who presented to an outside hospital with gallstone pancreatitis. Her total bilirubin was 4.0 with an elevated AST and ALT in the 200 range. An ERCP was performed and multiple large common bile duct stones were identified. A sphincterotomy was performed and stones were attempted to be removed. However, the stones were too large to be removed. She was referred here today for further management, and the game plan today is to do an ERCP and evaluate the size of the stones and then perform a uh, spyglass direct visualization examination with the attempt at using the electrohydraulic lithotripter to extract these stones. So we're going to do a cholangiogram initially, identify the bile duct, the stones, and then characterize what we need to do as the next step. So I generally use a uh, sphincter tome for all my cases. Uh, it gives, just gives uh, better access to the bile duct. And I like the Autotome 44 sphincter tome. And here's the uh, sphincterotomy. It, it looks like it may need to be uh, enlarged a little bit. Okay, Jermaine, let's inject. So you can see here, these are, it's a very dilated common bile duct, and you can see some smaller stones down distally. And then just below the scope, we can see that there appears to be a fairly large stone here that's obstructing the uh, distal duct. We'll advance our wire, and this duct is packed with stones. So Jermaine is going to peel the wire down to the scope. And then we will remove our sphincter tome, leaving the wire in place as, the, as a ramp. Now having this short wire in place is not a, a detraction from advancing the spy scope over the wire. We can use this very effectively. We don't need to have a long wire. In fact, I prefer the shorter wire systems. There are a couple small stones in the distal duct, and we'll use a uh, balloon catheter to extract some of those smaller stones before we go up with our spy scope. The principle remains the same no matter what you're doing, is you need to divide and conquer. And that means you need to clear the, the bottom part of the bile duct first before we go to the proximal part of the bile duct. Because otherwise what happens is a log jam will develop in the distal part of the bile duct and then nothing will come out. So we want to make sure that we have the, the distal part free and then we'll go ahead. Typically as we start our day, uh, um, Jermaine, who is my ace tech, will set up the spy scope for us before we get started. So that we can use this as any other device that we have on our shelf. Now Jermaine is going to attach this to the scope, so this is a single operator system. So you can see here there are the two dials, which are the up and down, and the right and left. There is a lock here as well, which will lock our controls. This is the working end of the scope. The spy glass probe goes through the spy scope. This is the guide wire and device port. So our guide wire will come out of here and then we can put any device that we need to do. Uh, today we will be putting an EHO probe down, but we can also put down a biopsy forceps as well. We have independent water irrigation here, so water or saline can be infused to clean the duct. So the setup time is fairly uh, short. The uh, spyglass um, itself is preloaded into this blue catheter down to the level of the scope. We keep it inside the spy scope to protect it. And then once we get up into the bile duct, we will then advance it to uh, a point where we can do some visualization. I'm going to advance this into the bile duct. And we can do that under endoscopic vision. We can also use fluoroscopy to tell us where we are. So we're well within the bile duct right now. Now what I'd like to do is actually pull the guide wire out. 
When I pull the guide wire out, it gives me better, visual, better ability to move the tip in four ways. So rather than having the guide wire, which serves as the ramp, it will inhibit whether I can move this back and forth to its fullest extent and up and down to its fullest extent. So that's why we like to pull this back into the, um, into the spy scope. I'll advance our uh, spyglass probe, and you can see this fluoroscopically through the spy scope down. There's actually a stone right in front of me. So what we're looking down here is this tunnel out of the spy scope, and as I advance my spy glass probe, you can sort of now see that we're in the bioduct. And if we watch fluoroscopically, you can see that that's what's happening as well. Now we've come up against a stone right here, and it looks fairly large. So what I'll have Jermaine do now is we will go ahead and uh, irrigate with our independent water irrigation here to see if we can visualize this stone a little bit better. And you can see that this is a fairly large stone. And there's uh, a lot of uh, debris within the bile duct as well. Now, because there's been a big sphincterotomy here, what we can do is just continue to irrigate the duct. Now, my plan is right now is to remove our guide wire from spy scope and we're going to advance the EHL probe down through our spy scope to perform our EHL. The generator is uh, attached to the cart, so it's right here with us when we need it. We set our settings, um, and we always test the probe before we put it down. You see the shocks, and those are little sparks that we get. Now this EHL probe will go down through the accessory channel of our spy scope. And again, it's important to use short strokes. Now there, we will feel some resistance at the elevator when the EHL probe reaches the elevator. Now I feel some resistance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look away and I'm going to try and advance this up over the elevator. Open my elevator all the way. You can see that, that it's open up all the way. And there's some resistance there, so it's not moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back my spy scope a bit. So this is actually with withdrawing the spy scope back into the duodenoscope. And I'll advance my EHL probe up to the point where I feel resistance again. I will then advance my spy scope back up into the duct. And you can see that fluoroscopically right there is where the spy, where the EHL probe is. And I will advance a little bit more to get that into the straight part of the duct. And it should slide right up. And you can actually feel that, and you can see that sliding up now up into the bowel, that there's that radio opaque marker there. And this will advance up into the duct, and it should almost be at the tip of the spy scope. And there you can see it right there, coming right next to our visualization probe. Now, we're going to see this endoscopically on the spy image right there at the uh, 10 o'clock side. And what Jermaine is doing now is he is infusing some saline into the duct and we're going to now start our EHL part of the procedure. There's a little bit of mucus here, so we'll try and eradicate some of that mucus and give some more saline. So we can see the uh, probe right there adjacent to the stone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shock this. And what we do is we start with 50% uh, power and then increase the power as we need to. You can see that it's bouncing around. You see the stone starting to see little fragments coming off. And you can see a little defect where we were adjacent to the stone. And now there's a little bit of fragments coming off. If we were not getting any effect, we would then increase the power. And I step on the pedal to get me nice shots. You see the stone is starting to break up nicely. 
it takes sometimes a couple of shots to make sure that you're getting through the stone. You see here is another big stone right there, directly in front of us. We'll apply our shock wave to that as well. Here we go. And I've delivered a number of shocks here. It looks like it's starting to crack a little bit. And there is a bunch of fragments that are now popping off of that stone as well. Once we break apart all these stones, we need to go in and get the stone fragments out. Oftentimes they'll just drop out once they're made into small little pieces. But we do need to ensure that we're, we've cleared the duct. And the way we do this is to take the, uh, the spy scope out of the uh, bile duct at the end of the procedure and we'll use a balloon or a basket to clear the duct. The RX system is a fabulous system for removing uh, multiple stones. If we have the ramp inside, we can just keep going up and down with our balloon over this ramp without the fear of losing access into the bile duct. Oftentimes, it's very helpful at the end of the procedure to go back in and see what is left because after we've been in there for some time, there's a lot of air. And we can't actually always identify a stone that's res remaining in the bile duct. So it's important to go back in sometimes and identify the entire duct to see if there's any large stones. Uh, and you'd be surprised that under, uh, by doing a cholangiogram, sometimes you can actually miss some fairly big stones by, cho by cholangiography. Cholangioscopy, on the other hand, is able to readily identify these. If there's something left behind, then we can go back up and, and deal with that stone that's left behind. So Spyglass DVS has been a, a big boon to my practice. It's been uh, very helpful in allowing me to deal with uh, large stones in a very effective, efficient manner. I'm able to generally remove stones that have been unable to be removed by multiple techniques in the past, and this will save the patient from going to a surgical procedure. So in my experience, this has been a, a boon to my patients, and I've been able to care for them in a very effective, careful manner.